Hello viewers, welcome to this module on the machine learning and this will be the first introductory session that will give us about you the overview of machine learning, how machine learning techniques can be used in the grid and in the other fields of the electri electric engineering. So we will start with this session. First we would like to know why we would like to use the machine learning because nowadays we all know like Google has introduced the driverless cars and these machines can do the task in place of users or in place of the drivers like we can see here the machine can diagnose the 50 eye diseases that are not possible to diagnose by even the doctors so when we use the machines along with the doctors then it will be a double check for the users and for the patients and we will be able to diagnose the diseases like we all know the smartphones can be unlocked with the help of these machines like they can check our face and uh, detect our face with the help of face recognition and our phone can be unlocked with the help of these machine learning techniques so we we are all around us are the machines and these machines are taking the decisions on behalf of the users and as a result of that these machine learning techniques are used so why these machine learning algorithms or techniques are used that but now we would like to discuss what exactly is the machine learning so writing the code on behalf of the user that is exactly the machine learning because we all know when we write the code on our own by the user it will take too much amount of time and it is a cumbersome task so let the data do the work in place of the user by writing the code on their own this is somewhat like the automating the automation and we are just letting the computers to write the program on their own on behalf of the user this is exactly what is the machine learning we all know in case of traditional programming approach we give the data and rewrite the program and give both of these as an input to the computer and we ultimately get the output but in case of modern programming approach or in the case of machine learning approach we just give the data and the corresponding output to the to that particular data and the computer or your machine will automatically write the program for that and this is exactly is the machine learning so if we would like to say in terms of herbert alexander simon learning or you can say the machine learning is a process by which a system improves the performance from its experience more the experience the system has it is going to improve its performance and machine learning is concerned with the computer programs that automatically improve their performance through the experience so there are multiple steps when we are going to apply the machine learning technique in the field but first of these steps we would like to identify the objectives so what are our objectives where we are exactly going to apply these machine learning techniques and what are the problems but that we are going to target with the help of these machine learning techniques so after the objectives are finalized we would like to collect the data the data collection can be automated through the help of sensors or some other techniques and once the data is collected it may be possible that there are some errors or maybe the data is not consistent or maybe the data is inappropriate so we would like to prepare the data depending upon our problem domain and after that we will select the appropriate machine learning algorithm that can be applied or that will be suitable for our model after the selection of algorithm and the collection of data that is well prepared we would like to train our model now training will be done from the data that we have collected and after that some portion of the data will be kept aside for the testing the model once the model is tested we can predict the output from the model whether it is working fine or not and if the prediction is successful then we can deploy our machine learning model or machine learning technique to the field where we would like to solve the problem so now this machine learning technique is basically used for the knowledge discovery or taking some decision on behalf of the user so it is somewhat like the knowledge data discovery in which it is a non trivial which is a non trivial process of identifying the valid novel and potentially useful and ultimately understandable patterns in the data we would like to identify the patterns that are available in the data that will be useful for the users this is basically somewhat is data mining and that is done with the help of this machine learning 
Now the machine learning finds its application in various domains like in case of grid we would like to predict the energy on hourly basis. We may use the smart meters like in retail management we would like to have the customer relationship management or the market basket analysis. In case of finance we would like to know the credit score for each user and accordingly the credit credit card value may be given to the users we would like to detect the fraud in case of the credit cards and some others online uh, techniques of banking in case of manufacturing we would like to increase the production by decreasing the fault or troubleshoot some problems those are existing in the system in case of medicine we would like to diagnose the diseases as we have seen 50 or more than 50 eye diseases can be diagnosed with the help of machine learning techniques those are very difficult to be diagnosed by the doctors and in some other fields also the machine learning can be used like in case of web mining we would like to do the search engine optimization and fingerprint DNA matching in case of bioinformatics. So is the machine learning really a magic? No, it is not a kind of magic. It is just like a gardening we do. Like seeds are here, the algorithms we are going to sow them and we are going to use the data as the nutrient in case of machine learning we are you're going to use the programs as the like the plants and we are actually the gardener those who are actually using the complete system so machine learning has progressed a lot from different fields and it is preferred over some other techniques also like nlp speech recognition computer vision nowadays the machine learning is used over these techniques this is because nowadays we are quite it is a quite challenging task to extract the knowledge from the human beings so as a result of that we all know there was a failure of the expert system in early 1980s so there is a demand for self customization to the user environment also it is difficult to write the code or software by hand that is why we would like to use the machine in its place and we also have the new sensors and io devices that are having the improved data capturing techniques so we have a lot of data that can be easily applied to this machine learning techniques and we nowadays we also have the high computational power with the grid and cloud computing and we have the improved machine learning algorithms also that can be easily deployed or used in the system so machine learning in a nutshell we can say we have the large number of machine learning algorithms available with us and many more are being added each year so as a result of that it is very difficult to select the appropriate machine learning algorithm to for to for the prediction or for the solving our problem in the real environment so we would like to know which machine learning algorithm can be used there are three components in each machine learning algorithms those are representation evaluation and optimization so we need to see these components before deploying the appropriate machine learning in the field representation in case of machine learning is basically the space of the allowed model the hypothesis space but also it takes into account the fact that we are expressing the model in some formal language that may encode some models more easily than the others even within the possible set so in case of representation it is basically representing the two things here the hypothesis space on which our algorithm is going to work or and the formal language in which we are going to write these models or represent our models. These are the representation techniques like we can have the decision trees, we can have the support vector machines, we can use the set of rules for logic programs, we may use the neural networks, we may use the instances or we may use the model ensembles, we may use the graphical models like Bayes and Markov nets etc for the representation. Coming on to the next that is the evaluation which is essentially how we judge or prefer one model over the another model. It is generally seen as a fitness function, loss function or maybe scoring function, a utility function in varying contexts. It may be thought of as the height of the landscape for a given model with lower areas being more preferred or desired than the higher areas without the loss of generality. So we would like to evaluate which model can be used depending upon the fitness function. So evaluation is done on the basis of some parameters through which we identify which of the evaluation metrics we can use. These are some metrics that can be applied here like the accuracy we can check, 
we can check the posterior probability we can check the precision and recall on the basis of specificity and sensitivity we can do the squared errors we can check the entropy we can check the likelihood we can check the cost or utility and margin etc there are many others evaluation metrics also on the basis of that we can check our evaluation technique and the third and the last one that is the optimization that says by which we search the space of the representative model now we have selected the model we have evaluated now it is the optimization which tells how we obtain the best evaluation this is the way we expect to traverse the landscape to find the promised land of the ideal model that will be suitable for our problem domain there are two broad categories of optimization first is the stochastic gradient descent and second one is the this combinatorial or genetic algorithms through which we do the optimization linear programming may also be used in some cases for the optimization now there are two broad categories of learning one is the supervised learning and another one is the unsupervised learning there are two sub two more categories those are semi supervised we will see and there is another one that is the reinforcement learning so first we will discuss the supervised learning in which that is used to classify or predict the objects or problems or situation based on the labeled data we provide the system with the training test documents or some sounds or images then the feature factors or the attributes are extracted from it and it is provided to the machine learning algorithms in machine in supervised learning we also give the labels along with that and accordingly uh, our machine or machine will predict the output so we give the data that may be in terms of image or sound along with the labels on the basis of which the machine has to classify the things on the other hand in case of unsupervised learning we find the hidden pattern that is available in the unlabeled data so in case of unsupervised learning we just give the input to the machine that is in the form of data but we are not going to give any kind of labels so we are just we are interested in finding the patterns those are existing in the unlabeled data this is somewhat like here if we have the training test documents images sounds feature vectors but during the training we have not given any kind of labels we are just going to extract the output or you can say the we the machine will automatically group the related data or the hidden pattern in the data together so we can see in this slide like there is a supervised learning we have given the labels in the form of star plus and circles and the machine has categorized or classified them on the basis of three categories in the case of unsupervised learning we have not given any kind of labels so machine is going to categorize or cluster or group them on the basis of their own depending upon the criteria that the machine will select on the basis of its experience that is gained from the data itself in case of semi supervised learning that is the third category here so we give the training data which includes few class labels but apart from that also the machine can group the data like in this here we can see the semi supervised learning we have given some labels but machine has categorized or grouped the data on the basis of these labels and along with that some other category also and the fourth one that is the reinforcement learning that is somewhat like taking some action and seeing the result if the result is positive then the agent will go into the, that particular direction or if the result is negative then the agent will go in the opposite direction now this supervised learning is also known as the inductive learning like you can see here in terms of mathematics like suppose there is a function that is made up of x and there is a, another variable that is y or you can say the function of f x so one is the dependent variable another one is the independent variable so we would like to find the dependent variable on the basis of independent variable here so if the variable x here we, we can we would like to predict the fx on the basis of x so if the fx is discrete then it is a classification or if the fx is continuous here then it is a regression like if you would like to predict the stock market it comes under the category of regression or if it is just uh, 
like the classification of our emails that lands up into the inbox whether it should go into the spam or not it is somewhat like the classification and it is done on the basis of some probability estimation so these are the methods of learning we can see here there are some supervised learning methods and there are some unsupervised learning techniques here in case of supervised learning we have the neural networks we have the decision tree we have svm instance based learning bayesian learning rule based induction learning theory model ensembles and some other techniques are also there in case of unsupervised learning we have the clustering dimensional reductions and many more so after the selection of the technique now it, it is the task to train our system or the machine that will be able to learn on its own now it is not possible to train the system without the data and for testing also we need some data so we have a common set of data that is available in the form of a universal set we would divide the data into two portion maybe the, we have the 75% of the data as the training data and maybe 25% of data we keep it as the testing data that will be used in the testing phase so we need to make some assumptions or adjustment that are known as the bias like we can see in this slide we have the data for training we train the system and we keep some separate data that will be used for the testing we check whether the system is working fine or not depending upon our machine learning algorithm so when we select the portion of the data from the universal set that is unobserved set we keep i said that 75% of the data can be keep for the training it is known as the observed data and we keep 25% of the data around this figures is not uh, fixed we can vary it that will be used for the testing you can see so when the system will learn the task then it will be able to test the data and give some result so we want the better matrix for the evaluation of our model depending upon the data so when this whole process is done with the help of training and testing then we will see ki whether our system is working fine or not so if there is a low bias and high variance it will result in the overfitting or we can say the our system has learned or it has memorized all the inputs and on the basis of that it is giving the good output when we are using the same data that we are available with uh, us for the testing but when the system will go into the real environment it may result in some kind of failure also and in case of underfitting the system has not the system is not able to predict the pattern that is hidden in the data and our system will not going to predict the data properly so underfitting and overfitting both of these techniques are not good for the case we want the best case that is available in between the two so there are several factors that affect the performance of the system like the form and extent of any initial background knowledge if we have any initial background knowledge available with us then also it will affect the performance of the system the learning algorithm which learning algorithm that we are going to use this will also affect the performance of the system the types of training method that we are going to use it again uh, results in the improvement or the reduction in the performance and the type of feedback provided this also is another factor that affects the performance and some other factors like modeling and optimization also results in the performance of the model so we would like to take all this into consideration while selecting the model evaluating it and deploying it to the real environment so this is all about the first session of the uh, machine learning we will see few learning techniques in the next sessions so thank you